Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin today's ceremony. Please silence all electronic devices, ensure you maintain social distance, and continue wearing a face mask. Additionally, for those inclined to participate in singing the Air Force song, lyrics, lyrics have recently changed. Please see the back of your program for reference. For those joining us virtually, please ensure your microphone is muted. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Senior Master Sergeant Dominic Gutierrez, and I will be the narrator for today's Change of Command ceremony, where we will recognize the change in leadership of the 92nd Maintenance Squadron from Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Greenwalt to Major Sean Pacieta. During the course of today's events, there will be several times at which you will be asked to stand. During the National Anthem, military members will stand at attention and it is appropriate for civilian guests to place their right hand over their heart. From ancient times, armies throughout the world have conducted ceremonies to commemorate victory over the enemy, to honor comrades in arms, and to celebrate special occasions such as the changing of command. In modern times, the primary purpose of the change of command is to allow units to witness the formal transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one officer to another. These ceremonies have added color and pageantry to military life while preserving tradition and stimulating esprit de corps. Our goal today is to continue the change of command tradition while recognizing the geographical constraints and current global conditions of the world we are in. We are grateful to Lieutenant Colonel Greenwald for his hard work and accomplishment in commanding the 92nd Maintenance Squadron and are excited to welcome Ma Major Pacieta as the new 92nd Maintenance Squadron Commander. For those in attendance, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation given by Chaplain John Ritter. Please be at ease. <clears throat> Psalm 78, verse 72 says these words, With upright heart he shepherded the, the them and guided them with his skillful hand. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, today is an important day as we pass the reins of leadership one from one commander to another. Today we say farewell to Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Greetwalt as the commander of the 92nd Maintenance Squadron. For he has been a man who fulfills those words of that psalm with a heart of shepherding others and to be successful, successful in all they do. As a leader, he has skillfully brought the 92nd MXS to where it is today. I pray, Lord, that he is blessed as he transitions to on to a new assignment. May he and Lindsay and Malai uh, find your presence at every turn as they look to new ways of serving others. Today, Lord, we also welcome to the 92nd MXS Major Sean Pacieta, as he takes the reins of leadership today, I ask that he is blessed with great success. May he find great satisfaction in guiding, mentoring, and blessing those whom he is entrusted to lead. May Sean find your strength, encouragement, and wisdom at every juncture while he settles into this new assignment. Bless him and each one of us as we endeavor to fulfill the mission of securing freedom for our nation and families. And help each one of us, Lord, to always look to you for all that we do. In your holy and precious name, I ask these things. Amen. At this time, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the official party. Presiding over today's ceremony is the commander, 92nd Maintenance Group, Colonel Michael O'Connor.
The outgoing commander, Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Greenwald, accompanied virtually from Ohio by his wife, Lindsay, and his children, May Lee and Lily. <laughs> the incoming commander, Major Sean Pacieta, accompanied by his parents, Leonard and Diane Pacieta, his brother, Leonard Pacieta Jr., and Sean Roby. We would further like to acknowledge the friends and families of our honorees watching from home. Thank you for your never-ending support. <laughs> to help recognize the importance of the ceremony, we are joined today by a number of special and distinguished guests. The Vice Commander, 92nd Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Gene Jacopas. <laughs> the Command Chief, 92nd Air Refueling Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Jason Hodges. We also would like to thank all group, deputy group, squadron commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, and members of Team Fairchild in attendance physically and virtually today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my pleasure to welcome the presiding officer for today's ceremony, Colonel O'Connor. Right. Okay. How's everyone doing today? Excellent. Thanks, chaps, for the great job. Appreciate all the great words. Um, thanks, Vice and Chief, for coming out. Uh, and then for everybody else who's viewing on the virtual universe, thank you so much for coming out to uh, wish Brandon Greenwald and his family, who's also out in the virtual world, a farewell goodbye. And then for welcoming Sean Passiat into the maintenance squad and family. It's only fitting on this beautiful Spokane day that we continue a proud heritage and a legacy of valor by witnessing Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Greenwald pass responsibility of command to Major Sean Passietta. As I searched for inspiration for today's event, I remembered some advice that I got a long time ago from a former boss. Basically, don't be cute or clever, and just speak the truth. So as I kind of went from there to figure out what I was gonna talk about, three words came to my mind. Standards, excellence, and family. Three words, why those three words? Well, for the most part, those of you who've been around long enough, there are pieces of what I like to call a leadership house. Every airman hears them during our newcomer's brief, and they're three words that I think encapsulate and define Brandon's time in the group. So standards. Standards is the foundation of our house. The ground floor supports everything we do. It's defined in Webster's Dictionary as a level of quality, achievement, etc., that is considered acceptable or desirable, a model or example. In Brandon's case, he inspired just like 3M the company. So every area that the maintenance squadron touched, they made it better. That if a job needed to be done, it was going to be done right, whether it was some small task like troubleshooting some sort of wires or, or some hydraulics to something large like the periodic inspection. But no matter what it was done, it was always done with innovation at its core. That is folks be proud of who they are and where they came from, and they're proud of what they do. And that they leave everything better than they found it, and if someone, regardless of what affiliation on the installation asked and needed their help or expertise, the answer was never no. It was always yes, and how much more can we help you to make it better? In a support squadron like MXS, getting folks to step out of their job jar is a tough task. Um, it tends to make people ask a lot of why questions. I can say that because as, having sat in that seat before, it's a tough job. Doing tasks in support of other organizations or in support of trying to get other things going for other organizations is sometimes not sexy. And honestly, from living in half my career in support agencies, it never really is. But Brandon, Brandon changed all that while I was here. So to quote an old Justin Timberlake song, Brandon brought the sexy back. <laughs> he made his unit the normal stop on any Wings DV tour. He showed his folks why the little things were important. And it was evident in the pride that I saw in his people in their walk, work why this was there. So sustainable excellence. These are the pillars or support beams of our house. It's the strength or structure of who we are and what we believe in. I don't need to explain to this crowd what excellence means, as we all know it's part of our core values. So Brandon, I can definitely say you raised the bar on what that means in the maintenance squadron. The job was challenging. You had to work together with our mission partners to help meld over 556 active duty Air National Guard and civilian airmen into one cohesive team. No easy task. And despite the normal ups and downs, the mission never faltered. In fact, it grew in its prominence. 
So over the time that you've been here, airmen have produced 152,000 maintenance actions, flawlessly supported two locations during Mobility Guardian 19, which was AMC's largest exercise. You led the charge to find solutions for the long-term sustainability for the multi-purpose refueling system, or MIPRS. You were tireless innovators. You had every one of your folks, after a while, adopted a culture of continuous process improvement, which produced CBM plus maintenance plans with the potential for $3 million and 2,000 man hours savings in a year and just aircraft supply actions. You acquired over $200,000 in cutting edge troubleshooting technology and then utilizing the theory of constraints concept, you've created a new KC-135 enterprise periodic inspection process, which estimated right now for the next upcoming year will probably return back in a potential of 1,095 days of aircraft availability, over 136 man hours for us to do something else with, and then a reduction of 690 non-mission capable days. Huge feats if you think about it for just a small unit. Just think if we extrapolate that over the whole enterprise, what that savings would be. And the list of innovation and success goes on and on. You have truly represented the, the vision or goal we envisioned two years ago in that room in October. We said our strategic offsite was going to be some sort of sustainable excellence as seen throughout your group. So without respoiling some of the piece parts of your decoration, that is just a snapshot of the incredible stuff your squadron accomplished during the last two years. The stats definitely reflect the leave it better than you found it mentality that we talked about. And so I would be remiss to not talk about family. So family is our roof. It's what protects us, it's what binds us, and what keeps us safe. Webster defies family as a group of people who are related to each other. And through all my years of playing team sports, the one thing I learned was a successful team was much like a successful family. It's important to me in my leadership philosophy. And like all good leaders, Brandon cared about his airmen. He takes care of all of them as if they were his own. Brandon, your airmen know without a doubt you care about them. Might be a hug one day, might be advice the next, might be a kick in the butt one day when they needed it. But regardless, whether they liked it or not, they know you did it because you care. And I know these past two years have tested you in a lot of different ways. Probably for the first time in a while, you didn't have all the answers all the time. Martin Luther King once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And you may have even stumbled a couple of times across those two years, right? But ultimately, if we all figure it out. You figured it out. And why is that? Well, pretty much it's because you were humble. Like you talked about it at today when we were handing out some mementos, you sought the advice of those you trusted. And in the end, you never complained, you never slowed down, and most of all, you never quit. And ultimately, it's because you cared. That is what a leader does. So while I'm on the, fam the topic of family, to his immediate family, I want to take a quick moment to thank Brandon's wife, Lindsay, and the girls, May Lee and Lily. So while we in uniform serve, our families are really the ones that sacrifice. Lindsay and the kids, on behalf of the men and women of this group, I want to say thank you for holding down the fort for the last two years while Brandon was off doing what he needed to do for his squadron. I know, and he knows, that he would not have been able to have done even I odor of what it was without your love and support over that time. And no, no one is more thankful you were in their corner, and no one was more proud of you than he was, and still is. Brandon, congratulations to the command tour, well done. I wish you and the family the best as Team Greenwald heads off to Yokota Air Base. Your airmen don't know how fortunate they are to have you coming in as their next squadron commander, tested, and ready to go. I look forward to watching where your career takes you, and you know if you ever need an air, you always know my phone number. All right, so like any great team, right, we don't rebuild, we reload. And once again, the Air Force has figured out how to find us the candidate to reload that team. So Major Sean Passietta comes to us from all the way over, way over in building 2097 on the side of the ramp. And he's where he spent the last two years as the Aircraft Maintenance Squadron Officer Officer. He's a core maintainer with a diverse and proven background. His time spans from the beginnings of an avionics flight commander at Dias Air Force Base to his stint as an instructor of physical education and director of cadet fitness at the Air Force Academy, which quite honestly, I have no idea what that means, but having been a former graduate of that school, I'm pretty sure it means you really didn't do a lot of work. I just want to say you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 
And through his time as an office officer here in it, wrote a naval station, and to this seat sitting on the stage, we are fortunate to have a leader, officer, and maintainer like you joining our team in a different capacity. So to Sean's family, his dad, Len, and mom, Diane, and brothers, Leonard and Sean, and to anyone else there on the interweb, thank you so much for everything you have done for him. I know he would not be sitting on the stage at this point in his life if it wasn't for the sacrifices, love, maybe a little brotherly beatings um, that you've given him over the years. And I promise you for the next two years we will keep him busy. But I also will tell you we will make sure he's successful because we're family. As of today, consider yourselves part of our family. And it's an awesome family. Um, Sean, you will accomplish great things over the next two years as the commander of this exceptional squadron. Or we wouldn't have hired you in the first place. And you know that. Continue the cycle of standards, excellence, and family. It is what you want to hear on the stage two years from now when we define your tour while you're here. Lead from the front, trust your people, and hold on, because they're going to drag you kicking and screaming to the promised land. Thank you again for everyone for coming. And let's get on with the rest of the ceremony. Thank you, Colonel Connor. Ladies and gentlemen present in the room, please stand as Colonel O'Connor will now present Lieutenant Colonel Greenwald with the Meritorious Service Medal. Attention to orders. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by Executive Order 16 January 1969, has awarded the Meritorious Service Medal, 3rd Oak Leaf Cluster, to Lieutenant Colonel Brandon L. Greenwald for Meritorious Service, 29 June 2018 to 15 July 2020. Lieutenant Colonel Brandon L. Greenwald distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 92nd Maintenance Squadron, 92nd Maintenance Group, 92nd Air Refueling Wing. During this period, Colonel Greenwald expertly led the maintenance efforts of 469 total force personnel in the completion of 11 KC-135 periodic inspections. His maintenance discipline guided the accomplish accomplishment of 21,000 repairs, driving an 82.5% mission capability rate, the wing's best in 18 months. Additionally, Colonel Greenwald's leadership enabled theory of const constraints innovations within the isochronal inspection section, leading to the reduction of the 52-day inspection cycle to 18, a 65% gain, and with the, an expected result of over 1,000 added sorties available to operational taskings annually. Finally, Colonel Greenwald's professionalism was leveraged, guiding his unit through the tragic death of a young airman, as well as the suicide of a spouse. His unrivaled interpersonal skills provided comfort to the squadron, and his attention to detail ensured timely, accurate communication between the families, base leadership, the Air Mobility Command Vice Commander, and the Air Force Personnel Center. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Greenwald re reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, we would like to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Greenwald to the podium for his final remarks. Thank you all for coming today. I was told that I could talk as long as I want up here, so I went with about size four font. I'm about 16 pages in, so <laughs> buckle up. <clears throat> now, uh, thank you all for attending the ceremony today and for all the professionals across the squadron and the wing uh, that uh, helped to put it on. So I'll try to keep this short and sweet, and I'm just pretty much going to keep this as a, as a message of thanks. Uh, so first off, to my, my family, Lindsay, May Lee, and Lily, I know this was not an easy assignment uh, for many reasons, uh, but you were my bedrock. You have sacrificed time and time again, both for my career and for my airmen. Uh, to say thank you feels uh, utterly insufficient uh, for what you guys have done. Uh, I love you more than I can express, and I'm looking forward to our next adventure together. Uh, to the wing leadership team, uh, Colonel Salmi and Chris Salmi, Colonel Jacobus, uh, Chief Hodges, uh, thank you for entrusting me with the squadron uh, and, and with, uh, with the airmen here at this unit. Uh, I, I know that whenever emails of mine came into your inboxes, usually late at night, that it was probably the highlight of your evening, uh, the many, many emails that I had to send uh, late night. But um, thank you for, for your mentorship, your opportunities, your, uh, your, your growth, the counsel and mentoring that, that you've given uh, uh, Colonel Jacobus, you have a traitor in your midst as far as those Coke Zero Vanillas. That wasn't me, uh, although I understand why you want to drink those. 
uh, and uh, Chief Hodges for uh, for being very open and working with the first sergeant moves and, and, and taking squadron feedback and not just moving all the pieces the way that you felt was the best, but but getting my feedback and, 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 and making me part of that process. So thank you. Colonel Connor, uh, thank you for the mentorship, education, and especially the patience uh, as I learned to put down the operations officer role and pick up the commander role. So uh, much like uh, Sean, uh, a lot of operations officer stints, uh, we're trained to be uh, maintainers and, and maintenance officers first and foremost, and so we love that. We love getting in there, figuring out flying hour programs and figuring out uh, fixes and how we make deployments work. And as uh, Colonel Connor, on, on a number of occasions, had to sit down and remind me that I'm no longer an operations officer, and so I'm a commander now, and that my airmen need me to serve them in a different function. So I still know I have a long way to go, but I definitely feel way more prepared for my next command because of your mentorship. To my squadron leadership team, thank you for caring enough about the airmen and me to always be honest in your actions and counsel. Chief Donson, T, you were my stalwart advisor, mentor, wingman, and friend. Jeff and Jeremy, I know you guys aren't uh, <clears throat> diamond wearers yet, but I couldn't have asked for better first sergeants. Mark West, Brian Watson, Dusty Kruger, Rachel Horn, Bill Warren, uh, thanks for leading and taking care of the mission as my operations leads. As I just discussed, it was not easy for me to let that go. Uh, it's difficult to put that, that away, but, uh, but not, uh, I didn't have to worry about that op operations uh, focus. You guys took care of business every single day. To my CSS team, uh, I could not have done my job without you guys. Um, I'm, as you guys have seen, I'm, I don't even know how to sign PDFs without your guys' help. So uh, thank you for teaching me how to do that. And just the, the, the multitude of ways that you guys have taken care of me. To my flight commanders and flight chiefs, you guys were my tribe. We spent a lot of time together. Most of you guys ended up with that song that announces your arrival because we have lots of conversations in our offices. Uh, thank you for the good and challenging times. You were a cadre of incredible leaders, and I couldn't have run the squadron without your engaged and enthusiastic leadership. To my partners in crime, the 141st Maintenance Squadron. It's been a load of fun. We had our fair share of drama, especially early on, and I know I was a part of that. Uh, but we moved past that to open comms and an easily shared vision. I know this will continue to flourish under the new leadership teams on both sides. And finally, thank you to the men and women of the 92nd Maintenance Squadron. Thank you for letting me play a small part in the story of your lives. I have been truly inspired and humbled to be associated with such unrivaled professionals and human beings. As our country attempts to make forward progress, righting wrongs of generations past and present, I ask that you continue to be the example for the Air Force and our nation. The example of how peoples of different races, genders, beliefs, and experiences can band together, leveraging our diverse strengths through honest dialogue and understanding to create unmatched opportunities. I wish you all the absolute best in the future and encourage each of you to reach out if ever in need. Sean, good luck. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Greenwald. At this time, the men and women of the 92nd Maintenance Squadron, represented today by the Squadron First Sergeant, Master Sergeant Jeremy Hall, wish to render one last salute to their outgoing commander. Traditionally, the change of command and responsibility is symbolically marked by the relinquishment of the unit guidance by the outgoing commander to the presiding official, who then presents the guide on and thus authority to the incoming commander. While the official party will not physically pass the guide on due to health guidelines, the spirit of transferring complete and total responsibility from one commander to the next still remains. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command ceremony. Attention to orders. The Department of the Air Force, Headquarters 92nd Air Refueling Wing, Fairchild Air Force Base, Washington. Special Order GS-12204, Subject Change of Command. Under the provision of Air Force Instruction 51604 and effective 11 June 2020, Lieutenant Colonel Brandon L. Greenwald is relieved of command and the, of the 92nd Maintenance Squadron, and Major Sean J. Pacieta assumes command.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my honor to present to you the commander, 92nd Maintenance Squadron, Mr. Sean J. Passiat. Okay, I had all this stuff prepared on this super fancy note that you see here. And I was going to be sexy and cute, but uh, Brandon took all the sexy, and I was told I can't be cute. So, uh, <laughs> Colonel Jacobus, thanks for taking the time. Um, you know, I meant everything I set out in the, in the room over there. Chief Hodges, same thing. Uh, I know you didn't have to, but uh, it's great to have you here. I appreciate that. To the RMC staff, Senior Master Sergeant Gutierrez, Lieutenants Serna and Muniz, to all the volunteers, uh, our, our wonderful wing chaplain, thank you so much for uh, making today special. Uh, I did actually have all of this stuff, a uh, bunch of stuff written down, but uh, really the only thing I can think about right now is, is the fact that my family's here and they're all in unison thinking the same thing. Get away from the podium, idiot. This isn't about you. And they're 100% right. This is not about me. This is about the faith that uh, Colonel Salmi and, and you, boss, uh, have in me to, to hire me into this position. Um, like you talked about, it's about family, uh, the faith and confidence that my family has had in me to continue supporting me and uh, come all this way during this awkward time to, uh, to support me today. But most importantly is about the, the 92nd Maintenance Squadron. Uh, and that's hard for me to say maintenance squadron, not aircraft maintenance squadron, but, but I'm all in. So this isn't just about the squadron, this is about the men and women of this squadron. Uh, the great lineage and heritage that this squadron has had through the many years, trials and tribulations, the developments that Brandon is, has brought about, uh, I could not be more proud to step in front of this squadron and work with them to continue moving the ball forward. So really all I can say, and then I'm going to get the heck out of here so my family doesn't punch me in the face later, um, I will work tirelessly to be a member of the team and to lead you well and to lead with you, and I won't let you down. Thank you very much. Thank you, Major Pacieta. At this time, the men and women of the 92nd Maintenance Squadron, again represented today by Squadron First Sergeant, Master Sergeant Jeremy Hall, wish to render a first salute to their incoming commander. Ladies and gentlemen, the men of the, and women of the 92nd Maintenance Squadron are proud to have served with Lieutenant Colonel Greenwald and we wish him and his family the best of luck in their journey. We also welcome Major Pacietta to the 92nd Maintenance Squadron. Thank you to all of those who joined us physically and virtually today, and thank you to all the facility, change of command, public affairs, and protocol workers who have made today's ceremony possible. This concludes the change of command ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel O'Connor. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you and have a good day.